Um, hi everyone, thank you for coming. So just a quick reminder again, fire exits are there, there and there. So this is Jack Wilson with his talk on analysing the privacy of VPNs on iOS. Thanks. Uh, thanks everyone for coming. So quick disclaimer before I start. First up, I'm not a dev. I don't come from a developer background. What I'm saying said from a security perspective. Secondly, I'm not a lawyer. So take what I say about jurisdictions and legalities with a pinch of salt. So why are we doing VPN security? Well, this came up on Twitter. It was a magazine that was saying, use a VPN and you can stay 100% anonymous. I thought to myself, well, well, that's horseshit. And I decided it was worth looking into. Then I looked into it a bit more and I started to come across tweets like this. So this Android VPN app was leaking loads of personal identifiable information. So your Mac address, your username, lots of stuff that could identify you as an, indiv as an individual for an app that's meant to keep you private. So there's a couple of notes from the article that I've highlighted here. The first one is, so the advice was generally, generally okay. Explain what a VPN is, why you should use it, why you shouldn't use it. But the stay 100% anonymous claims garbage. And this highlight here, so it's saying that workplaces have an unacceptable usage policy and you can use a VPN to mitigate this, to access content you might not be able to. And it's saying... You, you'll not get in trouble because using the VPN hides your traffic. So you're not going to get in trouble for browsing dodgy websites, but you're going to get in trouble for breaching your acceptable users policy and what's worse. So why iOS? You think it would be a lot easier to do this on Android. You've got an APK you can rip apart. Well, unfortunately, some clever buggers beat me to doing Android. Um, some guys from UC Berkeley and elsewhere. So. I opted for iOS. Um, quick disclaimer, I am an Android fanboy, so this was new to me. So to start with an absolute basic, what is a VPN? All a VPN is, is another server somewhere in the world that you're routing all of your traffic through to prevent sniffing by your internet service provider, by some dodgy person on public Wi-Fi, which ties in nicely with Ian Ferguson's talk. Um, it is against acceptable uses, uses policy, to use a VPN on Edge Room, which made Tesla a nightmare, even to the extent that IS have a keyword block on VPN. So I can't even research, never mind use one. If you are going to use a VPN, you do need to consider your threat models. So firstly, you should use a VPN if you want security on public Wi-Fi because you're tunneling all your traffic so nobody can see it. You should use it if you want to avoid your ISP tracking you and tracking where you're visiting. Um, you, should, you can use it for appearing somewhere you're not to avoid geo restrictions. So sometimes you used to be able to use it for Netflix to get US Netflix until they fix that. Um, or if you want websites to avoid tracking you, kind of. Um, this used to be more relevant years ago when websites would track you based on your IP address, but now they're using cookies and other things, so it's not as relevant. You definitely shouldn't use a VPN to avoid governments. Every time leaks happen, we get more and more surprised that the awesome capabilities governments have to survey us. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't use a VPN for that. I'm sure they've got almighty powers that can mitigate that. And you definitely shouldn't use it to be anonymous. Privacy is not the same as anonymity. And if you're even given it an email address to register an account, you're already de-anonymized. De so when you pick a VPN, that involves a lot of trust because what you're doing is giving all of your traffic to the VPN provider. So are they going to try and keep your data safe and secure? Are they going to stick to the claims in the privacy statements? So there's an example of this later on. Are they truly the no login VPN service that they're advertising? Again, there's news articles showing this isn't true in the past. Are they going to sell your data to ad agencies? Are they going to fiddle with your traffic and inject JavaScript into it or inject their own ads into it? Like I said, that is all a VPN does. It moves your trust from your internet service provider to the VPN provider. If you don't trust them, what's the point? So there are some good examples of trust, one of which is TunnelBear. They're a fairly well-known VPN provider. They recently completed an independent third-party security audit by a, a German pen testing company called Q53. They published the results of the penetration test and the follow-up pen test on their website, which you can go and read. This signifies a good level of trust to me because they're very open and transparent about the security and steps they're making to keep your data safe. On the other hand, um, there's stuff like this. So PureVPN is another VPN service. If you go on their privacy policy, 
this is a big banner at the top. It says we do not keep any ads that could identify a user. Then they gave logs to the FBI that identified a user. Um, no logs. So there's, that's questionable when it, you reduce your trust with a VPN provider when they pull stuff like that. Um, here's another example from a few years ago. So HOA was a pretty popular Chrome extension that let you access US Netflix. Um, but they were, rather than using dedicated VPN servers, they were using other HOA users' IPs as endpoints. Um, again, that's quite problematic if someone was browsing questionable traffic and that's exiting the VPN tunnel at your computer, your IP address, it looks like it's you doing that. Um, it's not really a botnet, it depends on your definition of a botnet, so that could be debatable. Um, and another prime example is Onavo. So it's a pretty popular VPN app, but it was bought over by Facebook and they explicitly say in the privacy statement, we redirect all traffic to Facebook, we'll log it and we use that for analytics. So yeah, it's a secure VPN app, but you're giving all your data to Facebook. Um, and also fairly recent news, McAfee buys TunnelBear. So TunnelBear was incorporated as a company in Canada. McAfee is incorporated as a company in the USA. Again, I'm not a lawyer, but that moves the legal jurisdiction and what a federal agency would have to do, the whole jurisdiction changes because of the, where the company and the parent company is registered. So you have to consider other things like this outside of the technicalities. There's a whole bunch of other things you can look for as well, depending on, again, your threat model and how much you care to look up this. So are they hosting the VPN servers themselves? So are they hosting it in AWS or DigitalOcean? Um, are they using an up-to-date protocol for TLS? Um, do they guarantee any uptime? It's not really security related, but it's nice to have a dependable service. Do they have any policies around staff access and customer data? Do they require authentication to be able to access that or is it just sitting for any staff member to see? Um, do they keep logs and if so, how long do they keep them for? Um, do they take any measures to harden servers such as, well, obviously ensuring good patching practice, full disk encryption, stuff like that? Um, and are they storing passwords in plain text or are they using a good protocol like bcrypt to store them? Uh, and like I mentioned with the tunnelware stuff, the country of incorporation, so what legal jurisdiction does the company fall under? So this brings us to the dissertation. The plan here is to take a bunch of free and cheap VPN clients and test for if they're sending anything over HTTP, if they're sending anything that could personally identify someone over HTTP, if they're leaking DNS, which tunnel and protocol implementation they're using, are they requesting any odd permissions that they might not necessarily need? And other weird stuff that I found developers to be doing, which is questionable. So what's the point? Well, when you're looking for VPN, most people, you know, they're cheap. They like to save money. They're going to look for a free or cheap VPN app. So get an overview of the market in this area and its security. Based on the findings, write guidance for developers to improve the general security of VPN apps and based on some of the really bad findings, responsibly disclose this to the developers. So before I get into the testing criteria, there, there was a whole selection of apps. Some were actually decent, some were questionable, some weren't even in English. So to give you an, an idea of what I had to go through with the dodgy Engl and non-English ones, just imagine how I had to film this. So a phone on the desk in Chinese, a phone above this with Google Translate, and a phone above that to film the whole thing. Um, it, it did start with a case of let's just press the button and see what happens, but that wasn't too successful or consistent, so that's what I ended up doing. So first up, I was testing for HTTP. Were the apps using it? Was it personal identifiable information contained within that? So HTTP, it's unencrypted web traffic. Um, PCAP using RVI, amongst other acronyms. So I was packet capturing using Apple's remote virtual interface technology, which mirrors the Wi-Fi traffic through the lightning cable to a virtual interface on the Mac, which you can point packet capturing software at. It's quite clever, but be Apple being Apple, it's exclusive to their ecosystem. So you need an, you need an iPhone and a Mac. Um, from that, I analyzed the PCAPs. I started doing it manually and went, fuck that, there's way too much data here. So I wrote a little bash script. I, I say a little, but that was a nasty, nasty grep command that I spent far too much time getting to work consistently to analyze the PCAPs for me. So I had a word list of common keywords that I was looking for, such as email address, IMEI, 
UDID, anything that could be personal identifiable in a word list, and I was searching for keywords like that. So you think encrypting passwords is simple, but um, unfortunately not. So this one is my password that's MD5 hashed. It's sending a post request. Um, again, lots of passwords, far too many. This one here at the bottom, um, I very much doubt that I'm user one. So I'm half certain that that's the developer's credentials. Half certain, I'm not gonna say definitively for that. Um, so how can this be fixed? Encrypt everything, um, it's fairly simple. So certs are free from Let's Encrypt. It's pretty easy to set up and configure them. Um, obviously that's fine and well if you own and run your own infrastructure, but if you're dependent on third party services, for example, for advertising, that's not quite as easy. And then it comes down to the VPN developers to evaluate user privacy versus how much money they'd like to make. So how can this be fixed on a larger scale? Because it's fine and well telling people to encrypt, but if they don't want to do it or they're lazy, they're not going to. So back at Worldwide Developer Conference in 2016, Apple announced they're going to enforce mandatory transport encryption. So every app needs to encrypt all traffic. Then they postponed it and that's it. So Apple really, really need to enforce mandatory transport encryption like they plan to do and have a definitive date for this taking effect. The next fairly prevalent issue is DNS leakage. So this occurs when your DNS requests are sent outside of the VPN tunnel and it allows whoever is receiving the DNS requests to associate that directly with your IP address rather than with the IP address of the VPN server. Based on the DNS requests, this will allow whoever is in control of the DNS server to track you and what you're doing. So this was tested by using the website dnsleaktest.com. It was pretty simple, nothing like packet capturing. Um, so how can we fix DNS leakage? Uh, in a perfect world, we want VPN providers to run their own DNS servers, which centralizes trust because all of your trust is then with the VPN provider solely. So your traffic, your DNS requests are all with the VPN provider. Unfortunately, DNS is a strange protocol and not everyone's gonna want to run their own DNS server. So at a bare minimum, we want people to use trusted or secure DNS providers. Um, I put that in quotes because trust means different things to different people. You might want to go with someone like Quad9 or Quad1 since the advertiser are quite pro-privacy. Probably not Google since they log everything. Um, another potential solution is to use DNSSEC, but there's some debate over how good and effective this actually is. Um, and just as an honourable mention, um, DNS over TLS is a thing, so it sends all DNS requests over TLS so it's encrypted and nobody can sniff that and monitor your DNS requests. Nice feature. So after that, I tested for tunneling protocols. So Apple supports three protocols, upwards of iOS 10. That's IPv2, which is it's fast, it's good, it's secure, it's modern. It supports IPv6 and it supports um, it supports maintaining a connection between network changes. So if you're on cellular and you connect to Wi-Fi, the VPN connection will not drop between that network change. They also support layer two tunnel and protocol over IPsec, which is allegedly compromised by the NSA, but I'm not gonna go down the Snowden rabbit hole today. And the last one they support is an SSL VPN, which is lightweight, it's clientless, it works in a browser, and it's primarily intended for employees to remotely access internal assets. It's not really what we're looking at. So testing for tunnel and protocol implementations was a bit of a nightmare because some VPNs documentation and websites mention which one they support. Some configuration settings on iOS also mentioned this, but that wasn't terribly consistent. So I ended up doing further analysis on the packet capture files, and using the Bro Network Security Monitors Protocol Analyzer to further determine which protocols were in use. And I'll get onto all the results of this a bit later on. So next up was permissions. Again, this was something that was incredibly simple to test for. So all we wanted to find out was are apps requesting any permissions we might not necessarily need, and if so, which ones? This was pretty simple to test for, just interact with the app and see what it was requesting. If this was Android, I could look into an APK and see which permissions they were requesting based on the code, but that's not quite so easy on iOS. So while I was testing the apps, I did come across some other weird findings that were a bit outside of scope and a bit concerning. 
The first one was an app was found to be sending a post request to this web server, which was running Django Web 1.6.1. It's a Python web framework, but the version they had installed was dated December 2013. A quick Google, I found out it's got multiple CVEs that are quite bad, so probably not someone you want to be sending your traffic to. Another application um, required you to install a self-signed root certificate on the device to be able to use the VPN. Uh, nope, that's just going to allow them to intercept and fiddle with your traffic. It's probably not the right way to configure a VPN. Then you just saw some stupid stuff like downloading a configuration file over HTTP. That would be quite easy for an attacker to intercept, modify the configuration file, and route all of your traffic through an attacker's VPN server, for example. Even outside of my research, some apps have come up quite consistently. So Hotspot Shield is a pretty popular VPN app. It's got 9 million installs worldwide. Um, but this flaw found that the app was running a web server locally on the device that hosted JSON endpoints. Um, these JSON endpoints included the user source IP address, the Wi-Fi SID, and the country they were located in. Going back to Ian Ferguson's talk in the last slot, you could combine this SSID with wiggle.net, the war driving website, and potentially locate exactly where a user lives. Not great if you're using a VPN for, for privacy. Um, the researcher also apparently developed a proof of concept for remote code execution, but he didn't release this publicly. Um, and then just a couple of days ago, Daniel Cusper also tweeted this, saying that the same app um, was not authenticating when you click through from an email. So that this app's got some issues. So are there any other alternatives to the free VPN apps that you find? I've personally been using Algo for a few months now. So it's a, essentially roll your own VPN software. It's a set of Ansible scripts that you run and you give it an API key to your favorite hosting provider, whether that's DigitalOcean, AWS, whoever else. It uh, only supports IKE2, so it's the strongest, most secure protocol. It works really well natively on Apple, so you just give it the, like, the VPN configuration file and it works dead well. It was a bit questionable. So on Android, you have to use a third-party VPN client because Android doesn't natively support IKE2. And on Windows, you have to download and run a PowerShell script at admin level, which questionable. Um, it has got built an ad blocking though, based on the DNS resolve. The DNS resolve essentially will block known ad providers. Um, and the cheapest digit lotion droplets five dollars a month, so it's a pretty affordable VPN. Um, obviously, that means you can also run and manage and maintain it yourself, so you're trusting yourself with your data rather than some VPN provider in Russia. So at the end of the day, I tested 57 apps. I stopped at that number just to annoy people with a bit of OCD. Um, so first up, HTTP. Out of the 57 apps tested, 39 of these were using HTTP. And that's not for anything personal identifiable. That's just HTTP for anything. Out of the 39, 21 of these were sending personally identifiable information over HTTP. So you saw some examples earlier. That's, that includes... GPS coordinates, passwords, email addresses, advertising IDs, device IDs, all over plain text, unencrypted. Quite a high number. DNS leakage was also incredibly prevalent. So 73% of apps were, leak were leaking DNS. And out of the 73%, almost all of them were using Google's DNS. In terms of tunneling protocol implementations, um, a decent amount were using IPsec, just a little over half. Um, IP second itself is great, but it's even better when that's combined with IKE2 and it's combine, combined with the encapsulating security payloads. Just 15 apps were using the best recommended implementation, but I'm still pretty happy with 30 of them using IPsec. Permissions, the majority of apps as expected would just request a normal permission, so that's your VPN permission and your notification permission. One app was found to be requiring access to the camera roll, which originally was a bit questionable, but it turns out that the app was like a like storage cleaner wizard thing, so it would try and find duplicate photos in your camera roll and delete them. It was a bit strange they combined that with a VPN app, but when you see it like that, it's a bit of a better explanation for why. And then one app was also requiring GPS coordinates. Its justification for that was it was using your GPS location to find the closest and fastest server. 
But in my mind, you would do that based on latency, not location. So a bit of a strange one. So were any apps actually any good? Because I've talked about all this doom and gloom, all these horribly broken apps. Well, yes, surprisingly, there was a few apps. So all of the below apps are free or they're cheap and they didn't use HTTP and they didn't leak DNS. So Secure VPN, VPN Unlimited, Onavo, by the technical definition, was secure. But I said earlier, it's owned by Facebook and they're logging all your traffic and using it for analytics. So technically it's secure, but whether you want to give all your data to Facebook or even more data to Facebook, that's kind of up to you. CyberGhost and IBVPN. So again, you can see the tunnel and protocol implementations. These were all cheaper free and generally decent from the testing methodology. So just kind of as a quick summary, what can developers do better to improve VPN security? Then this is, this doesn't just apply to iOS, this is VPNs in general. So encrypt everything where you can. If you rely on a third party like an ad network that doesn't encrypt anything, potentially look to move to an ad network that does. Obviously that's more of a business decision than a developer decision because it's, it can affect your profitability as a company. But if you respect user privacy, you might want to do that. Don't take unnecessary data, because if you're in a data breach, you're knackered, so don't take data. Uh, the data you don't have can't be stolen or misused. The less data you have, it minimizes your risk and it minimizes the impact in the case of a data breach. Don't request unnecessary permissions. Again, just minimizing what you actually take from the user and what you can access. Um, make sure all traffic's routed through the VPN tunnel, so that includes DNS traffic, which mitigates the DNS leak and IPv6 traffic, which mitigates an IPv6 leak. And then use the best recommended tunnel protocol implementation. So that's IPsec with IPv2 and then capturing security payloads. So I've absolutely flown through that talk. Um, but if anyone has any questions or anything you'd like me to clarify, I'll try. And the whole dissertation's up there as well if you want to have a look at that. Uh, thank you. <laughs>